What's up YouTube and welcome back to another episode of Homebrew Subaru. In this episode I'm going to try and fix the check engine light on my Forester. So what's up everyone? I have been driving this thing with the check engine light on since the winter when I actually got it brought back out and cleaned it all up. Uh, I know, I'm pretty sure it's the front O2 sensor. I remember before putting it away I scanned it and I think it was the heater circuit in the front O2. Um, but there may be some more codes. Well, I'm going to plug in my little code reader and uh, see what's there. Okay, I don't know how well the camera will pick up the screen outside here. As long as I can get it plugged in. Let me get the key turned on. So it's just going to go through the protocols after... I think we just go right into diagnose. You can actually select it by manufacturer on this thing, but I think think just going through uh, checking the different protocols is a little faster it's already found it uh, it says there's two DTC's go for read codes yeah so 463 fuel level sensor a circuit high indicates high resistance on that circuit could be a bad connection um, I think after these things sit a little bit with, with low fuel level, the sending unit actually gets a little tiny corrosion on it, and it takes a while for the, you know, fill up a few times, drain out the fuel a few times, and it actually cleans up that resistor. Um, so this may actually clear. So the one that I'm really interested in is this one, P0032, heater control circuit high on bank one, sensor one. So that is the primary O2 sensor, the one up in front, ahead of the catalyst or the catalytic converter. And it looks like just the heater control, the heater circuit in the O2 is probably gone. Um, they kind of burn out and then it flags this code, kind of changes the fueling of the vehicle a little bit and you will go through a little bit more fuel because the sensor isn't being heated up on startup. Yeah, so this is, it actually indicates the heater control circuit as a pending code. So I'm actually just going to leave the codes in it for now. I've got a few good known O2 sensors and one that would probably fit this thing. So I've kind of got to go through the connections, check some part numbers, and then see if I do actually have it. Um, I don't really want to try and repin one of my older older ones because I'm pretty sure the ones, I bought some new ones for the Turbo and Preza wagon when I did that, but I'm pretty sure the connectors are different and I don't really feel like repinning something. So I just gotta go inside, search what I have, and then I'll figure out if I can do this or not. So sorting through some of my mess, I've got this O2 sensor, uh, which was replaced, you know, after the turbo engine went into the last car uh it, really not a lot of mileage on it it's rather a newer o2 sensor but the connector is the wrong connector and to try and repin it uh, to make sure it's good connection i'm sure is possible the parameters are probably very close to if not the exact same but looking through some other ones that i have uh, i've got a couple rears and i actually have a front o2 for a subaru here uh, with the right connector I've looked online and it does appear to be the correct one so before I pull it out I'll just double check to make sure and I really don't know the condition of this whether it's going to work and, and the heater actually works in it or not so yeah I'm just going to back out the 240 pull the Forester in on some ramps and hopefully I can get that O2 sensor to come out yes the underside is uh, getting pretty crusty <laughs> uh, it's just something I'm going to have to deal with in the future if I decide to keep this thing I've noticed uh, quite a bit of oil now and it looks like the head gaskets are finally seeping on both sides. Uh, this thing was really dry while I had it on the road years ago and just time sitting around they've started to leak. Now I'm looking at this O2 sensor 
I realize now why I left it in place. Uh, it's in a very precarious position. You can kind of see it back in there. It's directed at the cross member, the subframe. Um, and the axle's kind of up in the way there. And the shield's in the way here. Uh, the, the shields really tend to rattle. Uh, but this one's still fastened in place. And I think ultimately uh, to get it from the underside or I mean if you ran into the situation where you kind of had to do it, you'd just you'd have to drop the exhaust. You'd have to let go of the header or disconnect this flange here, the two bolt flange, get some new gaskets and drop it down and then peel the thing out of there. I think what I'm going to do is try and attempt to get it out from the top because I really don't feel like taking any exhaust actually apart. Um, so looking from the top side here, you almost can't even see the thing. You can just see the kind of the hex end of it sticking out of the catalytic. Um, but I think if I can get a box down to the wrench down there and then maybe double wrench it, I might be able to swing the wrench kind of up through here. And then just for reference, so you're kind of looking around here, the connector for this thing is just over here. Okay, so I'm gonna be honest, that was a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be. I uh, just kinda of took away the air box, pulled it up out of the way, and uh, you can see how much extra room you get down in there. One long wrench, opened end, and a good tug. It actually just cracked free and came out. Um, of course, the exhaust is pretty warm. I do have the thing warmed up but it's not too hot to the touch um, but you can see how much soot has built up on that o2 sensor from not running properly and uh, hopefully this one takes care of it it did have a little tiny tear in the wiring insulation down here so i just put a little electrical tape that should be okay and installing this clearing the codes and just testing it right away um, the heater circuit is something that the ecu checks on startup first thing and so it, if it doesn't work it should flag the code right away and if it doesn't I think I'll be okay another debate I always see is putting anti-seize on the threat of O2 sensors I'm sure if you put enough of it it's certainly going to cause a problem and contaminate the sensor um, but just a tiny little touch uh, on the threads is going to help get it out the next time and not do a thing to hurt it I'm sure something I've done for a long time and never had an issue so to be honest I've uh, cleared the codes run the engine code came back cleared it a second time run the engine a second time the code has come back it is the same p0032 heater sensor circuit on bank one so there at this point I've changed the sensor there is a possibility there's a problem with that circuit further down that's not getting connection to the ECU um, sometimes it's even a bad fuse on some vehicles but I, I'm pretty sure the fuse on this will power other things um, so I'm gonna have a quick look at the wiring diagram just to make sure I'm on the right road and then I'm gonna go ahead and take that old style O2 sensor off that up pipe that I built cut the connector off wire the new connector solder it on and uh, put it in place and see what happens and this is the finished product here. So this is the upstream O2 sensor out of that uh, turbo up pipe that I had in my old car. And I've literally cut the connector off of the old O2 sensor and uh, kind of figured out which, which wires go where, obviously blue and white to white, but kept the grounds in order on the connector. I'm pretty sure it's wired correctly. Um, I've gone ahead and soldered those connections now a lot of people would say, oh, you can't even solder them. It's, you know, it's the type of wire, the aluminized wire, silver type wire that's used. But I don't, if you can't get wire to solder, you're using the wrong solder. Stop using plumbing solder. <laughs> so all I'm going to do is just quickly wrap this up with some tape, install it, and we'll try this all over again. Okay, so I've got my hacked up O2 sensor installed. Um... I can understand why a lot of people would think this isn't going to work and you know they got some logic behind it but in theory like 
I'm sure a lot of people are thinking the solder. You can't solder that wiring. But getting to the ECU, there's a pin on the connector of the ECU, and then there's basically a circuit going directly to some solder onto the board, and that's how it connects. So, you know, as long as you have a really good connection, you're gonna have no resistance changes, and the thing should actually run the exact same as if it was just a piece of wire. Um, a lot of people are thinking oxygen reference. Well, there's some holes on these O2 sensors, and that's where the oxygen reference comes from. It's if you plug those that you're gonna have a problem. Um, really old O2 sensors, yeah, the oxygen reference may come through where the wire passes through, um, but I didn't go any solder anywhere near that. Another thing would be getting the voltage from your soldering iron onto the wiring and damaging the O2 sensor, or um, just the fact of the heat causing damage don't worry about any of that stuff just solder it make sure the wiring's all good and pop it in see what happens so i've got the codes cleared again o2's installed everything's ready to go now mind you i have a little exhaust leak at the back it's nothing too serious but and that light is staying out so definitely our heater circuit is taken care of. So I actually do have a little bit of a data stream on uh, this thing. So we'll just get back into the ECU. So it is moving, it's doing something. We've got some change, engine light staying out. So hopefully it stays like this and I will just uh, report to you later on whether this is good or not. So I am really glad that worked out and it just went together and cleared the code, finally got it out. Even having to do it the second time and hack up a sensor, I mean, that's, it's all just work to me. Um, but realistically, that's like a hundred bucks back in my pocket because uh, even my cost on those sensors is around a hundred Canadian. And I know they can go upwards to $150, $160 pretty fast. Um, you get into an upstream O2 sensor and they, they cost almost twice as much as the downstream. So getting in that in, in there has you know, saved me a little bit of money. Um, but the main thing is I'm planning on going on a road trip with this thing. Uh, so I'm going to pack it up a little bit and head to Jasper for a few days. And the drive there and back, well, I'm going to end up saving like... I don't know, maybe twenty, thirty dollars on fuel. Um, it's really hard to say, but gonna definitely save on some fuel. Uh, I won't get that stinky exhaust when I'm, you know, when I do smell it. And uh, another thing is, with the check engine light out, my cruise control will work again. <laughs> uh, not that I usually ever turn it on, but there might be some, you know, little stretches of high highway where I decide to kick it on and just chill because it's quite a bit of drive from here all the way out to there and back. But uh, yeah, so that's the plan. Uh, I will be taking some good amount of footage and pics while I'm out there and I'll hopefully share a couple of videos with you guys. Hopefully this thing makes it all right. It's been good all summer long. All the brakes are still working great. Um, even the oil, like I'll just check all the fluids basically and be ready to go. I've already changed the alternator belt I was getting a little bit of a squeak out of it and I've decided to take off that AC tensioner and belt because that thing hasn't worked since I've owned this so so with these couple little things done uh, basically I'm only gonna have to check like fluids tire pressure torque the wheels and I'll be gone uh, so yeah hopefully uh, that's in the next couple weeks hopefully maybe I'll have a video before then it's hard to say but uh, if you like this video definitely give it a thumbs up and if you're new here and you haven't already please consider hitting that subscribe button for me leave your questions and comments further down below and i'll see you in the next one